So Jeremy Clarkson wrote a column which even by the standards, with the possible one that that dreadful Hopkins woman wrote for The Sun a few years ago, it was more more shocking to me as a, as a former Fleet Street tabloid journalist, albeit not on a, on a, on a right-wing newspaper, as a former Fleet Street tabloid journalist, I could not believe my eyes when Jeremy Clarkson wrote doubly of his desire to see Meghan Markle paraded naked through the streets of every town in Britain while the crowds chanted shame and threw lumps of excrement at her. But in terms of base misogyny, I found it even more remarkable that he talked about hating her even more than he hated Nicola Sturgeon, whose only offence seems to me, uh, from Jeremy Clarkson's point of view, at the fact that she's a woman, uh, or possibly the fact that he's Scottish, and independent and and strong-minded. And, of course, Rose West, a serial killer. I hate her more than Rose West. Um, And he got into trouble. He didn't do much for a while. Uh, Well, I'll read you his account of the uh, aftermath of the publication of this story shortly. The month that has passed since it was published... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> makes the decision to release a statement publicly yesterday. The first one was just, oh dear, oh dearie me, I've accidentally done a sexism. <laughs> Please. And it was pathetic, the original apology. We, we, we said so at the time and we shall say so again now. Dearie me, I've done a sexism. In fact, it ties in with the conversation we were having in the first hour of this morning about a toxic culture of misogyny, about the kind of comments that um, uh, female police officers routinely encounter Uh, at work that idea that it's absolutely fine to talk about women like there's nothing wrong with it at all and if you don't like it if you don't go along with it then you're just you're you're frigid is probably a word that's often used or you're just a killjoy you're just this you're just that you're just the other precisely the kind of approach that defenders of jeremy clarkson would adopt if they were trying to explain why Meghan markle shouldn't be um disgusted outraged upset devastated at being um uh, publicly, very publicly, are judged to be less appealing than a serial killer. But um, they didn't see it coming. That's what I partly find fascinating about this story. As, a, as quite a close observer of Matters Media, they didn't see it coming, and I know why. Actually, to rein in the ego a bit, son. I think I know why. I think I know why, and I'll tell you. I think it's because they... Um, they, all bets are off with Meghan Markle. For reasons that Harry touches upon in, in, in quite a lot of detail in his new book, all of the rules, and there aren't many rules, there really aren't many rules when it comes to what columnists can and can't write, but there are a few. At least there usually are a few. I think that somehow the sort of collective hysteria that the British media has indulged in with regard to this woman and to a lesser extent her husband, the collective hysteria has seen a complete abandonment of even the... Oh, I nearly used a phrase very popular in Private Eye magazine there, which I'm not allowed to say on the radio. Uh, The the so-called standards in British tabloid journalism that are little better than a fig leaf do actually exist. There are lines you cannot cross when writing about public figures who have done nothing wrong public figures who have committed no crime, public figures who are responsible for no offence and who have hurt nobody. There are lines that you can't cross. But they lifted those lines for Meghan Markle because this story is not just about Jeremy Clarkson. It's also about everyone who read his column and decided that there was absolutely no problem whatsoever with putting it in the newspaper. I don't know how many people would be involved in that editorial chain, but there would be some. And then, of course, you have the... uh, added horror of the political editor of the BBC having the editor of The Sun on the television on the Sunday morning following the publication of this article while the entire country was in uproar and and she failed utterly. She's not the political editor anymore. Laura Coonsberg, she's got her own show now on Sunday morning, is completely failing to ask the editor of The Sun a single sniff of a question about this absolutely incredible story that is still rumbling a month later. But that's between her and her her employers, I suppose. But that's how it happened. In that even, I mean, I'm trying to think of a way of explaining this from your line of work rather than mine. But, oh yeah, here you go. So we'll do it the other way round, right? So imagine that the boss's 
daughter works with you and she doesn't have to obey any of the rules that everybody else has to obey. She gets away with murder on a daily basis. But it turns out there is actually one thing she can do that will actually result in disciplinary action. It's like the opposite of that. Mega Marco, you can say what you want. You can write what you want. You can print whatever vicious, bilious nonsense you please. Because it's her. You know, absolute stuffer. I mean, it's, uh, good, you, yeah, write what you want, lads. Anything at all. In fact, the women can go further because then they've got even more of a fig leaf. Sarah, fill your boots. Alison, seriously, do your worst. Anything you've got, pull them all out. Go all stops removed. I know you've been pretty vile about various other people over the years, but on this one with this woman, I want you to rewrite the rule book. I want you to launch the abuse of this woman into the stratosphere. Incredibly, for someone as old and experienced as him, Jeremy Clarkson managed to go too far. But the reason why it happened is because all modes of self-censorship or common decency or basic expectations of something remotely resembling uh, decency is the word I'm running with, they've been suspended. That's how it happened. All right, And not just suspended for him, who wrote it, but for everyone who read it on its way from his fevered imagination onto the pages of Rupert Murdoch's Sun newspaper. And then they did what they always do. They just hoped it would all go away. And it didn't, because lines had been crossed and because some members of the British public retain a capacity for disgust, despite years of gaslighting and grooming by Rupert Murdoch and his friends in the media. So it wasn't so much writing about her a naked Megan being pelted with excrement. It was the Rose West comparison that stuck most in my craw. Anyway, you know the chronology. He, he uh, uh, the son apologised a few days later for the December article, removed it from its website, apparently at his urging. Je uh, Emily Clarkson, who is the daughter of Jeremy Clarkson made clear her disgust at uh, what her father had done and indeed the role it plays in the broader picture of misogyny. And he issued the following apology, which is, I mean, for a man who's supposed to be fearless, for, for, for a man who's supposed to be, you know, a man who pr prides himself on, yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. So it's just pathetic. It's like a mewling, a mewling schoolboy. Um, oh dear, he wrote, I've rather put my foot in it. In a column I wrote about Meghan, I made a clumsy reference to a scene in Game of Thrones, and this has gone down badly with a great many people. I'm horrified to have caused so much hurt, and I shall be more careful in future. And then he laughed all the way to the pub. Except, of course, he hasn't apologised to Meghan Markle, and he hasn't referenced Rose West. So if the story's still bubbling away a month later, and he's apparently facing the end of employment with an organisation like Amazon, he's obviously decided, completely coincidentally, that he needs to return to the fray and offer up a more fulsome apology. Which reads as follows. One of the strange things I've noticed in recent times is that whenever an MP or a well-known person is asked to apologise for something, no matter how heartfelt or profound that apology may be, it's never enough for the people who called for it in the first place. Poor me, poor me, poor me, poor me, a drink. So I'm going to try and buck the trend this morning with an apology for the things I said in a Sun column recently about Meghan Markle. I really am sorry. All the way from the balls of my feet to the follicles on my head, this is me putting my hands up. It's a mayor culpa with bells on. Usually I read what I've written to someone else before filing, but I was home alone on that fateful day and in a hurry. So when I'd finished, I just pressed send, and then when the column appeared the next day, the landmine exploded. It was a slow rumble to start with, and I ignored it. But remember, this is an absolutely deep and sincere apology. But then the rumble got louder, so I picked up a copy of The Sun to see what all the fuss was about. This is weird. We've all been there, I guess. In that precise moment when we suddenly realise we've completely messed up, you're sweaty and cold at the same time and your head pounds and you feel sick. Um, this is how he now describes what he described at the time as having rather put his foot in it. I mean, there's a world of difference between, oh dear, I've rather put my foot in it and you are sweaty and cold at the same time and your head pounds and you feel sick. I couldn't believe what I was reading. Oh, I've got something in common. Had I really said that? It was horrible. I knew what had happened straight away. I'd been thinking of a scene in Game of Thrones, but I'd forgotten to mention this, so it looked like I was actually calling for revolting violence to rain down on Meghan's head. I was very angry with myself, because in all those controversial days on Top Gear, when I was accused of all sorts of things, it was very rarely sexism. Yeah. That's right, because you compared her to two men, didn't you, when you talked about hating her on a cellular level? You said, I hate her more than Fred West and Rishi... Oh, no, you didn't, mate. You chose women. 
but you're definitely not a misogynist. We never did women can't park gags, for instance. Is it too late to get them canonised? They never did women can't park gags on, on Top Gear. Is it too late to put him up for sainthood, do you think? Is it? Is it? Uh, or suggested that powerful cars were only for men. Yeah, here's a big shock here. Television presenters trying not to alienate potentially half of their audience. I'll give the man a medal. And I was thrilled when Jodie Kidd and Ellen MacArthur set fastest ever laps in our reasonably priced car. Pardon? What? You compared her to a serial killer and said you preferred the serial killer, and you think the fact that Jodie Kidd drove a car quickly round a track on your old television programme somehow exonerates you from the allegation of misogyny? Mate, I think you should have read this to somebody before you sent it, never mind the actual article. But he's not finished, he says, I'm just not sexist. Which is, of course, what all sexists say. And I abhor violence against women. And yet I seemed to be advocating just that. No, pal, you were not advocating just that. You were... <laughs> you weren't seeming to advocate just that. You were advocating just that. And for a man who abhors violence against women, how could you possibly hate someone who has committed no violence against women more than someone who killed several women after torturing them with her husband? Nothing says I abhor violence against women than saying, here's a blameless princess who I've got a problem with for reasons I can't really explain, but I had dinner with her mother-in-law last week. Uh, and I hate her more than an actual serial killer. But I abhor violence against women. Oh, and Ellen MacArthur once, draw a, once drove a car really quickly around a track on a television programme I used to present, so how could I possibly be a misogynist? It's pathetic. But it's not the worst thing. It's not the worst thing about it. He also revealed, I think, that he had... Yeah, here you go. I was mortified, and so was everyone else. Oh, bless him. Bless, oh, bless him. Uh, my phone went mad. Very close friends were furious. Even my own daughter took to Instagram to denounce me. What do you mean, even my own daughter? I imagine she was at the front of the queue, mate. The son quickly apologised and I tried to explain myself. Oh, I've told you how he tried to explain myself. Oh dear, I've rather put my foot in it. It's gone down badly with a great many people. I'm horrified to have caused so much hurt and I shall be more careful in future. I therefore wrote to everyone who works with me saying how sorry I was. And then on Christmas morning, I emailed Harry and Meghan in California to apologise to them too. That's just weird, isn't it? Christmas morning. I said I was baffled by what they had been saying on TV. Why? That's sorry, but, mate. Oh, I'm writing to apologise. By the way, I'm really baffled by what you've been saying on TV. What, what, who cares what you think about what they've been saying on TV? You've just compared this woman unfavourably to a serial killer. And you think they're still going to be interested in your opinion about their television? But anyway, on he goes. I emailed Harry and Meghan in California to apologise to them too. Over the last 30 years, I've written very nearly 5,000 newspaper and magazine columns. So it was inevitable that one day I'd do a Harry Kane and Sky one of the damn things. No, it wasn't, mate. No, it wasn't inevitable. Which is what happened with the piece about Meghan. Bringing Harry Kane into it. What's he done to deserve this? Absolutely unbelievable. But that's not the worst thing about it. The worst thing about it came later. I'll tell you what it is. After the very latest news headlines with Amelia Cox.